Welcome to Electron Online. In this video and the next, the next several videos to come, we're going to show you how to graph the general shapes associated with polar equations. The first one we're going to start with is the circle. Now, here we have four different equations. All four of them will make circles, but they'll look a little different, except for two will look exactly the same. We'll see in just a moment which ones. Let's start with r equals 3. So here there's no restriction on the angle theta for all values of theta r will be equal to 3. And remember, r is the distance from the origin to a point on the graph, which means we find all the points that are distance r away from the, from the circle or from the origin, and therefore we're looking for all the points that are 3 units away. In other words, that would be this point right there, this point right there, this point right there, and this point right there. And if we connect those, you'll see that that will form a circle. In other words, every point on this graph, every point in the circle is exactly three units away from the origin, and so this represents r equals three. Now let's jump across to this one right there because there it says r equals negative three. You go, wow, how do you draw something like that? Well, can we do that? Well, for any angle, for example, if I point at an angle of zero degrees, that would be this point right there, but at this angle, r is negative three, which means if I'm pointing in this direction, r would be in the opposite direction would be negative 3 from that direction. Or if I point in this direction, r would be negative 3 over there. So it turns out that r equals negative 3 gives us exactly the same equation as r equals 3. So in other words, again, if I'm pointing in this direction, r equals negative 3 is there. If I point in the, this direction, r negative 3 is over here and so forth. So that means that we will again get those four points. We connect those and again we get a circle. Now it looks like I didn't quite put this in the right place, so let me, I think I made this one too big. So here it is, 3, 3, 3, and 3. So even though we have r equals negative 3, we get the exact same graph as we do for r equals 3. Okay, next let's try r equals 3 times the sine of theta and r equals 3 times the cosine of theta. So what happens? Let's plug in a few values. So if theta, if theta is equal to some value, what is 3 times the sine of theta? Well, let's try that. If theta is equal to 0, of course, the sine of 0 is 0. All right. And if theta is equal to 90 degrees, well, the sine of 90 is 1, and 3 times 1 would be 3. And if we go 180 degrees, we're back to 0. So let's try those three values and see if we can make sense out of that. So if we're pointing in the 0 direction, theta equals 0, that was along the positive x-axis, we have 0, so that gives us this value right here. Then if we point in the 90 degree angle, 3 times sine of theta would be 3. 1, 2, 3, so we get this point right there. And so you can see that as we change direction, let's say at 45 degrees, because maybe we'll take an intermediate value, or maybe even better yet, let's try 30 degrees. At 30 degrees, that would be 3 times the sine of 30 degrees. Well, 30 degrees, the sine of that is 1 half, so it would be 1.5. So at an angle of 30 degrees, r would be 1.5. So that would be right around here. So if you start connecting these dots, you can see that you'll end up with something like this. And then if you continue, then this will make a little circle like that. So when we go 180 degrees, we'll have a circle of radius 1.5. The direction from there to there would be 3. So the diameter would be 3. And you can see that 90 degrees, r is equal to 3. So that would be the graph for r equals 3 times the sine of theta. All right, now let's try r equals 3 times the cosine of theta, and we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll put in, plug in a few values. So we have theta, we have the cosine of theta, we have 3 times the cosine of theta. So at 0 degrees, the cosine of theta is 1. 3 times that would be 3. At 30 degrees, that would be 0.866. 3 times that would be about, hmm, let's say, 2.8, approximately. And so at 45 degrees, it would be 0.707. Three times that would be about 2.1. And at 60 degrees, that would be 0.5. That would be 1.5. And at 90 degrees, that would be 0 and 0. All right, so now we have some values to play with. My numbers may get in the way, but we won't worry about it. So anyway, at 0 degrees, we have a dot right there. That would be 3. At 30 degrees, at this angle, it would be 2.8. Put it about there. At 45 degrees is 2.1, so that would be about there. At 60 degrees, it's 1.5, so that would be about there. And then at 9 degrees, it's 0. So you can see if you connect these dots, you end up with something that looks like this. If we continue, then it looks like we'll have a circle that looks like that. So notice 
that when we have three times the sine of theta or three times the cosine of theta, we do get complete circles, but the sine of theta, the graph is directed in the y direction, so to speak, in the up direction, and in for three times the cosine of theta, then we get a circle in the uh, x direction, or I would say in the theta equals zero direction. If you talk about polar co coordinates, we probably should do it in terms of angles. So here we have th four different equations, four circles in polar coordinates. And so it's interesting that, yes, you can define a circle using polar equations like that. And that's how we do that.